This is Digital Marketing Fastlane. This podcast will show you how to build, launch, grow, and scale a widely successful online business. Listen to real conversations with proven practical strategies and success stories. You're going to learn how to generate more traffic, more sales, more profit, and customer lifetime value for your online store. Coming to you from the online marketing experts at Voy Media, here's your host, Kevin Urrutia. Hey everybody, welcome to today's episode of Digital Marketing Fastlane. Today we're going to be doing a brand audit. It's Friday, April 10th, 2020. We're still working from home. Hey Eric, what's up? Hey Kevin, how are you? Good. I was just asking you what you're up to today. So you just nice. told me you did a bunch oh. of uh, reports. Yep, just a nice little quiet Friday. But yeah, we have a really exciting episode today because we're reviewing a brand whose ads I've gotten a ton of times. And if you're in the digital marketing niche, you might have even gotten it. Um, it's called Monday.com. So I think they, I've never clicked one of their ads, although I've gotten a ton of their ads. So I think there's some sort of Asana or project management software style. Yeah, um, I mean, they're so definitely, yeah. I mean, they're like a project management tool. I mean, mm -hmm. I think, Eric, we use Asana here. Mondays is like a big competitor that just came out, which is interesting because I wonder what they were called before monday.com because monday.com is a pretty good URL, right? It's definitely yeah. Good, right. So mm -hmm. because it's like, uh, it's good. It's, it looks like it's an Israeli company too. Just by oh, looking at cool. where the pages are from. Oh yeah. 26 people or whatever. It's yeah. gotta be an Israeli company. It's, oh, for sure. But yeah, it is. I think you can tell by like not uh, available. So the organization, the, you look at the organization, it's from Israel. Monday.com is an interesting SaaS company. So today mm. we're going to be reviewing a SaaS company, which is great. We haven't done too many SaaS companies on here. So I think it's a great idea for SaaS business owners to sort of see how they're thinking about ads. And a company like Monday, they're doing it really well. SaaS companies make great for Facebook ads. And I think it's one of those places where people in the SaaS are just coming to Facebook ads, whereas e-commerce owners have been on Facebook for years. But SaaS has sort of been like, they don't really like to advertise. I mean, now they do. Mm -hmm. But they're realizing, I, I, I think we know, Eric, like SaaS is still the companies that have the biggest profit margins versus Absolutely. like Absolutely. E yeah. It's one of the best. Um, it scales so well. Uh, that's, yeah, that's definitely one of the business models that are awesome for performance marketing, uh, DTC, even, even if it's a business, a business, but this direct response marketing, you know, this is one of the, these are fast growing style brands. They can scale well because they're software. Uh, the, I imagine the margins are really good. So yeah, yeah, direct response marketing for this style of business is really good. And we're seeing a lot of good SaaS companies with really good ads and doing a lot of good direct response style marketing funnels, their website, um, and then you see them growing. So I like to think this is, I haven't dove into monday.com too much, but I think, you know, just by getting their ads so much, I have a very good impression from them from a direct response standpoint. So it should yeah. be exciting to look at them. Uh, do you want to dive into their Facebook ads now? Yeah, let's just look at what ads are running. All right. I think I, let me just make sure I click all ads. So yeah, um, this is their Facebook ads library. We love to, sometimes we look at a website first, but it's also cool to look at the ads library first before you even know what a brand does. So you see their ads. So you're looking at it like a, like the consumer would. You're looking at it like, oh, I don't know what they do yet. Maybe their ads tell me what they do. So this is a, that's a really interesting exercise. Uh, a lot of times brands I work with, when we just sign them as a client or a partner, uh, I like to do this first, look at maybe their ads first before I look at what they do as a business. So I can get an idea of what their ads are like. So that from an advertising standpoint, you can see if it's communicating it clearly enough. And that's super important. So this is what we're going to do now. We're just going to look at it. We're filtering by United States right now. And we're just going to scroll down. So upon the first thing, I see, ver uh, I see variety, it looks like. So I see something about property listings. Um, I see some kind of workplace. I see, um, it looks like they have a couple different, I guess, angles or personas. Yeah, so this one we're just seeing right now, which is like working away from your workplace and your coworkers isn't always easy. Monday.com brings your team together so you can continue to collaborate, manage and track your work in one easy to use platform wherever you are. So this is clearly an ad to sort of the COVID-19 where everybody's home. So they're running campaigns to 
um, do that. I mean, you can also tell that by the creative they have in that second ad in that image you have, Eric, where it's like start working remotely in minutes. It's very, um, yeah, I mean, it's like everybody's working from home right now. So it goes, I mean, I think if this is just marketing that makes sense. I think it's, you have to use your times to your advantage. Like people work from home, your platform that works from home, why not say that? Um, yeah. So yeah, I think they're definitely doing a good job. Can you play that video? The one in the, with like the, this middle, the middle one. All right. It's interesting. Yeah. You see the video, the thumbnail. This reminds me of like those old school infomercials where the yeah. it's like a black and white, right? And it's like, don't do it. This is the wrong way of doing it. I, I want to see if it's yeah. like that. I've never seen this ad. Yeah, it's exactly like that. Yep, <laughs> that's what I figured. You see? So yeah, this is interesting. I, I think this goes back to kind of what we're saying. Like those old type of videos work and the best agencies are doing that. And like, this is sometimes like you see founders are just like, no, this would never work for my company because my company's mm-hmm. different. But like, if you're growing and scaling, eventually you're trying every single tactic that has worked previously. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and this is one where I, I, I mean, I'm literally on their ads manager ads library for the first time right now. So I don't know how much advertising they're doing, but just over the last three to six months, I've gotten so many ads from them and I've consciously thought, Oh wow. So a lot of different, oh, it's still monday.com. It's a lot of different angles and stuff they're trying. So that's one, one of the reasons I was excited to look into this ads library. But yeah, this is a good example. Um, and this is a pretty cool video. You, you, I, I even bet this is someone on their team or their marketing team shot this from home, like yeah. in the last week or so. Also, this, is just, this could just be stock photo. I mean, stock footage. Oh, yeah. yeah well, there's just so many. So Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, look at it again with no audio. I like there's audio in the hook. That's something that we see pretty good because. A lot more people, if they're browsing at home, especially on a desktop, or even just they're at home on their phone, they might have audio on. They're not, yep. you know, on a bus or something. They're, so, and this is interesting. I like it's these little animations, too. These little Quick animations, cuts. pops yeah. of color. Yeah, these are something we see working really well. Yeah, I would consider this, cool. like, this angle style, like the old school infomercials. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, my God, I tripped and I can't get up. You know, those yeah. type of, yeah, it's the same. A light alert or something, yeah. too. Yeah. Exactly. It, it's, it's, they work. I mean, there's a reason why. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also that this goes back to kind of like when you're scaling aggressively, you're trying all the tactics where maybe in the beginning Absolutely. you're doing it, but like monday.com is a pretty big, kind of what you said, they're in subways, they're on billboards. So when you're doing really? subway and billboard ads, you're sort of looking for new channels of acquisition because you probably exhausted a lot of online marketing already. And that's oh. usually kind of how it goes, right? Like, I mean, mm-hmm. you see with all the DTC brands, they start on Facebook and Instagram, and then eventually your CAC just gets too high. Like, yeah. And then you, that, this is really why people are going to subway ads, billboard ads, <laughs> other channels, right? Because you're looking for a different acquisition source. Yeah. And I think sometimes founders of DTC companies think that they can stay on Facebook all the time, but building yeah. a brand isn't just Facebook, you know, yeah. it's everything else besides that. Yeah. And that's an interesting point about the subway and the transit ads. That's something interesting where I actually noticed in the last few months, uh, definitely obviously before the COVID work from home situation, but on the New Jersey path train. And I think sometimes on the New York city subway, you'll notice a brand might buy out the entire train cart. Mm -hmm. So literally every single wall of the ad is of the train is covered by that brand. And I feel like that makes a much better impression for the brand than if they got one ad on every train cart. Yeah, so, I was actually, I was at um, a growth conference, uh, not growth, growth meetup in the city. And I was talking to somebody that was doing the billboard ads for, uh, not billboard ads, but the subway ads for one of his companies he worked at. He was like a mm-hmm. VP of marketing. And uh, he said that like, the goal is to get like uh, the carts, like kind of we said the full thing. Obviously it's much more expensive. Yeah. And then, then versus like those little spotty ones that you see. But he said that like to get like a full cart, let's say New York City, because it was a New York City company, you have to book that like a year in advance. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So that's crazy. I was like so surprised because I think, you know, yeah. I record maybe 10 years ago, no one was advertising on Subway ads. No, like mm-hmm. no SaaS companies or like DTC companies were. And then yeah. when Casper started doing it, it was a big wave of, oh shit, this is an interesting acquisition channel, right? So you mm-hmm. see how channels come and go. And it's it, all it really takes is like one company to use it, and mm-hmm. and now every D to C company is using um, subways, yeah. subway ads. So when I was in China for a while, I don't know if it was a company or what it was, but like literally the entire everything is plastered with some brand or something, uh, in the same one. So I think some brand was doing some kind of flowers, or it was like some pink flower design, and they had some logo. But even the seats, the floor, the railings, literally every single inch of the subway 
train was covered in some kind of, in like the same homogenous branding is actually really beautiful because like you see it throughout the entire train cart. It's like a very long, there's no doors between the carts. Yep. So it was just, it was, it made a really cool impression. So it's like a, it's almost like immersive depending how they do it. So also another thing here that I think you were mentioning, Eric, is if you go up, go up a little bit again, mm -hmm. you see how this ad to the left, the first one mm -hmm. is manager leads and listing in one place. So they have per, uh, specific sort of personas or sort of markets that look at the target. Like obviously this mm -hmm. one's clearly for realtors or mm -hmm. real estate agents, right? So yeah. they're creative and the copy is related to that. So one thing that I think with a lot of these sort of businesses like monday.com is therefore obviously clearly for small businesses, right? SMB market. SMB mm -hmm. market is what, maybe I thought 33 million businesses in the, in the US, right, Eric, or something like that. But within the SMB market, there is definitely a certain segment that your company should probably be targeting, right? So it could be realtors, lawyers, agencies, right? That's a big one that they target. Mm -hmm. um, it could be plumbers or bakeries, right? So SMB yeah. market is so big, but I think with any brand, it's like you need to look at which sort of start targets market do you want? So for example, I was listening to a talk the other day of the FreshBooks, that accounting software. Mm. So accounting software, their, their main market is SMB. And the VP of marketing for him was saying how FreshBooks, yes, we're for everybody. But when we're doing our marketing, there's five core SMB markets that we go for. And that's really what we relay in our, on our website and copy. And he says, of course, we take other ones, but it's not literally who we focus on because we know that um, these five or six, whatever it was, bring in the most revenue. So they really try to focus on who those um, markets are. So it's kind of like any marketing. It's like, who are your core audiences? Um, yeah. And that's like, it's kind of what we say to everybody. Like every brand is always like, Hey guys, I really want to, I'm for everybody. But it's like, okay. You, you, yes, of course. If you're for everyone, you're for no one. Yeah, exactly. And, and what's interesting, what I like about, I think to Kevin's point, and what I like about a lot of these brands is they have different personas. Maybe they are for everyone, but they stick to different personas and they have different funnels for each persona, yeah. entire, entire funnels. And so I, I think I'm going to hover my mouse over the headline here in the URL. And if you see the bottom of my browser, it has uh, where it goes to. Te Kevin actually taught me this trick on the territory brand audit. But anyway, you can see it's LP property. There's like a property landing page. So they have their own funnel entirely for the uh, real estate age, the real estate industry. Uh, and that's pretty cool. And this one looks like it's a different funnel. It goes to a different page, work remotely landing page. So their whole funnels, even they have landing pages for everything. Yeah. I think it's important to think about like landing pages as general when you're doing ads, like your homepage is probably not the page that your target market wants to go to. Um, mm -hmm. Click on the work, click on the realtor one. Cause that's probably the one that's probably interesting. But yeah, landing pages are an important part of your marketing in general. And sort of what we do here is you see how manager property listings in one place, it's mm -hmm. very on par with what their ad said. Yeah. If you clicked it, if I'm a real estate agent or something and I click it, I think this is specifically a software I mean, for real estate yeah. agencies. So it is that audience of one funnel. You have a funnel for different target audiences. Yep. And go down real quick. I want like to see this, this page. Yeah. No, it, go down real quick. I want to see. Uh, okay. Go down. Okay, okay. Yeah. I mean, the landing page is perfect. It's exactly like if you look at the language and sort of here, it says property management, negotiation, working on it on hold. It's, it resonates with that audience. Like this is a, these are buzzwords or keywords that they're using. Absolutely. Um, yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. I like it a lot. One thing I would like to say on a separate note is I love their use of color and design. And I think this is very similar to some other brands we've looked at in the D to C space uh, that I love. So that's one of the traits I see of these brands that are scaling their aesthetics are just beautiful. Yeah. And uh, it's just kind of, there is like a less is more approach too. Nice. Okay, cool. Going back to ads manager now. Yep. Actually, let's just click this video just to see. Well, you can raise the volume up. I, I, need to, oh. I can't hear it yet because I can't hear oh. it. Yeah. It's good. I like that ad. It's very good. All right, cool. Going down. And the thing is, like, those ads are easy to make, it's not hard. It's yeah. yeah it's, that graphic it's, was pretty cool. It got me. I got yeah. I got to admit, but yeah, um, I know we're designer and do yeah. stuff like that. We can do uh, stuff like this too. Absolutely. And I, I think the thing about it here, Eric, I think that it tricks people up is this why kind of why you want to work with agency is like, you just really want the copywriting or the script writing on top. So mm -hmm. really what you're doing is script writing nowadays. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. 
go down. Yeah, looking at their other ads, a lot of work from home stuff I'm seeing. I've gotten a lot of their work from home ads in my own feeds. It looks like they're doing, um, um, is that like a lead collection? The yeah, one that says like uh, those, yeah, those computer ones. Oh, yeah. Global teams at work. It looks like oh. an advertorial maybe. Click on it. Yeah, it could be just like a blog post. Could be one oh, of yeah. Those. Blog post. Interesting. An advertorial. Global teams at work. The secret sauce. Click on the work from home platform. Go up. Go down real quick. Down, down. Right there. Yep. Okay, yeah. So it's like an advertorial to just educate people about. Yeah. This is like they're probably promoting their content, but they, they have clear call to actions in their articles. So yeah. we consider those advertorials where it's obviously educational in some sort, but it's really educating you towards that product and convincing you to buy that product. Yeah, absolutely. And um, what I like is it's topical. It's, it's relevant to probably what people are searching for, uh, remote teams. You know, people are probably really worried about that. I know a lot of, um, you know, I'm listening to a lot of podcasts of other agency owners and how they're, uh, in the last two weeks or so, they're thinking, oh, we're, we're just starting remote. You know, Void Media has been remote a lot. Um, other, a lot of other agencies are remote but a lot of teams are just not remote. And so this is something that I can see relating really well to a lot of people is, yeah, this is a nice one to work from home. Yeah. A lot of remote work stuff. Yeah. And more blog post stuff. I like the graphics templates. I know. Yeah. I think the, one, one good thing about, uh, I think monday.com is they promote their blog posts, but they also promote other content. So it's something that we tell other business owners and it really, it goes back to what we were, what we were saying before, Eric, where mm -hmm. SaaS companies can just spend more money to acquire users so they can send them through different funnels because mm -hmm. their customer acquisition is so much, it's such healthier, you know, like a SaaS company, like once you're, so with like, let's look, let's look at monday.com. Let's go to their pricing point, right? For example, uh, for like, I mean, we could, we could talk about like for us or Dropbox, right? We use mm -hmm. Dropbox here as a, our company to manage every client asset. Our mm -hmm. bill every month is like $200 a month, right? Mm -hmm. And like, are we realistically ever going to leave it? I mean, I think not because like, I, I, I think I myself was like, oh my God, the hassle of removing every document from that to another platform. Oh it's, yeah. Well, yeah. they got you for that one. Yeah. So you see how with these SaaS companies, that's why it's like Monday. I mean, even in general, just project management is such a big business because all yeah. your projects are on there. And mm -hmm. you don't want to, like for us, like we use Asana, like, yes, we can leave, but we find like kind of like, we literally have someone at the company that just helps us with Asana, right? Like Eve, right? Yeah. She just helps with Asana. So I'm like, now it's like, are we really going to leave Asana? I'm like, eh. no, it's like, that's yeah. why, yeah, it's like, yeah. Yeah, it's a powerful thing. Yeah, yeah, I, I get the retention is probably really, really high. So they want to make a really strong impression up front. But that's why there's marketing for them it's really great that they have all these like templates articles because what you're doing is you're educating the user about your business and mm -hmm. product. And then you built, you're putting them into different funnels. Yeah, um, absolutely. And plus like templates are always great, especially for, I think templates are great for these services such as project management tools where let's say you're an agency, right? You want a template that says, Hey, how do, how do I structure onboarding? Because mm -hmm. as the owner, you're like, Oh shit, this is a great template. I want to use that for myself. Right. And a lot of like, and this is also great for organic traffic too. Cause like, if you look at, um, like there's definitely agency owners look up like onboarding templates. That's a great keyword or search term that you can get in front of users. So this mm. all pairs together with your, your content and marketing. Yeah. Uh, and stuff like that. Yep. Let's talk about content marketing a little more. Cause we were just talking about that. I think earlier this week, how important content marketing is in these blog posts. How do you think these blog posts I get they're good for educating, but also for search results. How do you think they're improving that? I would say like, let's go back, to, let's go down to their footer. I want to see what's, I want to see what they're thinking about. Cause sometimes a lot of companies put like some of their really important work. You see how, if you go down here, go to like, you know, software management, let's see what they have. I'll actually go to the templates. Click on it says resources, templates. So you see, this is also a great way to sort of see how they think about marketing, Eric. You see how mm -hmm. they have guides, webinars, community stories. It's like they're doing everything. So go to like, um, yeah, see client management. Exactly what I was saying. <laughs> yeah. Go to, so now Google, what you want to do, Eric, is Google client management template. And let's see where they rank. So this is probably a really good keyword for them because they're probably right about, wrote about it, right? So yeah, see the number one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, you see how templates like if your business the something 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 template is a really good keyword because this is such this shows such high intent like someone mm -hmm. wants to do something how can i how can i give to somebody 
And now my, can my software provide that? So yeah. look up, for, for example, another great keyword to think about, Eric, is like look up like business templates or resume templates. That's another great, really good one. Oh, resume that one for sure. Yeah. You see how like there's such big intent. If you go down, you probably Tons have a lot of SaaS companies doing Resume Genius. It's a really big SaaS company. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so it's templates are always a great sort of way to educate people and bring them to your software or yeah. product or whatever Especially you have. Especially this target audience because they're probably project managers looking at this. Exactly. And uh, our template queen is our project manager. Yeah, yeah. She would be, she's for sure searching these things. Uh, client management te- templates, uh, task tracking templates. Um, how do you, I can, yeah. How do you improve, you know, planning? How do you improve this? How do you improve mm-hmm. um, all the stuff around this sort of content is, is sort of what content marketing, it's sort of you, it's content marketing exactly similar to marketing. What is your target audience looking for? And then you write about it. And then if you write about it and you rank, let's put that into ads. It's mm-hmm. personas. It's persona building, right? Absolutely. So, I could talk about LCL all day, Eric. Yeah. You know I mean? Want to look more at the ads because they have yeah, so many more the ads. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, let's get the ads. Yeah, I would say so like let's um let's do a sample sign up. I mean like let's just use a fake email and then we'll sort of see. I mean we can look at ads all day. But look, I think it's I think it's interesting up go down. What what I like about Monday what they're doing if you go down up a little bit more, you see how they had Monday plus Zoom. Zoom was like a big yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh like, yeah. Everybody is talking about it. So they're very like on par with what's going on and what mm-hmm. the marketing is like. Zoom, you see that everyone on your Instagram feed, all your friends are sharing their Zoom chats, their Zoom. So you see how like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And even I'm looking for an ad that I've been getting over the last few weeks. I don't know if they're still running it. Maybe I they're just targeting you. Maybe. I don't know. But it was basically... Pixel of Eric. It, it, was, it was the coolest ad. Maybe it's this one, but the thumbnail. Basically, at the top, it said how my boss thinks I work from home. And it's a guy in a suit dressed <laughs> up. And then the bottom half of the ad said how I actually work from home. And it's a bunch of pets slaying on the keyboards or people playing with their kids and stuff. Um, so that was a super cool ad. I think uh, we posted it. I definitely shared it internally with our team. Um, but yeah, maybe we share it into our Facebook ads explosive gr- growth group because this is a really cool ad in general. Yeah. Yeah. If anybody wants to join that group, just let us know. We have a lot of good ads that we share. Nice. Um, yeah. A lot of good stuff here. Maybe, we, yeah, let's do a, let's do a test sign up though, because there's so much stuff we can look into. Um, but yeah, the ads, you can see so many different angles that I got the real estate. Um, let's see what this it looks like some kind of student thing now. I like this style a lot. The buzzword pop-ups here. Um, I like that a lot. Let's go back real quick. Just, Oh, yep just a bunch of buzzwords that they're probably thinking about and they're just, it's just popping up. So that's pretty cool. I've seen this similarly done with like reviews, like people are in like cool comments. Like you'll have a, I think magic spoon does this really well. They have like a bowl of their cereal and then it pops up all the different positive comments people say about it on Instagram and Twitter and stuff. Similar to this. I like that a lot. Nice. Good yeah. Use that's of colors good. here too. Nice. Yeah. Really cool ads. All right. So let's click something and let's sign up as a funnel. Let's click uh you want to do the real estate one or you want yeah, to do, this is do the real estate one? All right. And then um, you don't have to use your email. Just go to um, just Google fake email generator. All right. All right. You're like, what am I doing? Email generator. Yep. Uh, this is very good content for the podcast, by the way, if you guys want to learn how to, uh, but I mean, if you're looking at a SaaS company, you're looking how to review a brand and just learn more about their funnel. This is an interesting way. So what this one, 10 Yeah, email? just go to the first one. And basically what you're doing here is just, just getting a fake email. Well, it's not fake, mm-hmm. but it's a temporary email. Let's wait a little um, bit. Just go it's ahead. One. Yeah, just, just copy, copy that paste one. It. Yeah, copy paste it. This okay. is usually how I sign up for stuff when I want to test it out because I don't want to give my email. So, okay. All right, cool. So uh, can go ahead and get started. Let's get started. All right. Enter my work email. Don't mind if I do. Government department. Ooh, they're going to get a little, <laughs> you're gonna get a little uh, government call soon. Oh, full name, just Kevin random. Arutia. No, no, just do something random. Okay. Don't put Kevin, my name. Put Kevin, Kevin, Kevin uh, Johnson. Okay, Kevin Johnson. And then password, for the password, just make something up. Kevin Johnson. Yeah. So you guys watching, you will have access to an account called Kevin Johnson Password Kevin Johnson. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, that's my team. GovDep5. Okay. Ooh, so see, now they want to know what you're using it for. You know? Um, I'm going to hit work. Ooh. I'm a business owner. I'm a business owner. 
Uh, and let's uh, let's rock their world. Five hundred plus. It's your yeah. company size. Oh, team size. Company size. Oh, I see. Damn, we're gonna. No, be, you're gonna get. Is, they're gonna. They're. They're gonna get pinged that they're gonna should call you to upsell you. To I should use a real, a real email because I want to see what their follow up process is. So, well, that's another thing. So we sign up for some emails from the DDC. I use my real emails because yep. I want to see what their follow-up processes are. So, um, uh, do marketing creative. That sounds fun. Oh, would you like us to contact you? I will put yes. I'll put no, cause I don't nah. want to put a just put for now. Yeah. You know, this is just an audit. I don't want their salespeople to take it's interesting. Or, so this is this, you saw, you saw what they had in here. You, did you see that? Did you catch that? Oh, I wouldn't I didn't read it too quickly, but I'm sure. So it said, watching. would you like us to contact you? And the pre-filled information was a phone number. Oh, that's cool. Because they're, they're oh, I bet autofill would do a phone number. Because subconsciously they want you to put your phone number. Nice. Oh, we got something. So obviously this is like a SaaS, just typical SaaS workflow. They want you to invite your people. Nice. Uh, I'm gonna click out of it. I'll do it later. All right, cool. And welcome to monday.com. All right, so it looks like I'm in. What am I working on? It looks like it's taking me through some kind of... Uh, just like a workflow. I'm just going to put brand review. Oh, name your groups, things to do, done. Okay. I like how yes. they give you a little... Uh, on the right side, it shows you kind of what... You see how like it autofills and it gives you a little preview of what oh, you're doing. Oh, I see. That's really cool as in like just as a SaaS company in general. Oh, yeah. Nice little animation there. Mm -hmm. Cool. Go to your go to your temporary email. Let's see if they emailed you. <laughs> oh, I can just yeah yeah. It's a real email. So oh yeah, wow! Nice. Learning something really cool cool in this podcast. Uh, Eric, I'm always teaching you things. Confirm the email. Yeah. So now you can see the email. Okay. Cool. Oh. Confirm. It. <laughs> go back. Go back to the email. Don't lose it. You, that's the only issue with these email tools is that like they open. Oh, up I I, I had to go back now. Yeah, just go back. Yeah, it's fine. We can go back. Uh, go back to the list. It says go back to, yeah, click on that. And then go down. Okay, cool. You still have it. Okay. Ooh, click here to talk to hot girls in your city. Gee. See someone using this email. Too. Wow. <laughs> That's very quick. Yeah. Go to uh, welcome to monday.com and let's see that sort of intro email. You sure not the other ones? <laughs> talk to hot girls in the city in the, in the corona. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, you see kind of very typical workflow um, introduction, you know, very kind of like even no matter what store you have, what business you have, um, you kind of want to introduce people to your product. And they've already, they've already <laughs> Cut the said, chaos out of your marketing. Yep. Right. Good language. And also this, this marketing is probably rather rele relevant to what you picked, mm -hmm. right? So you said marketing, it's because yeah, you probably I, said marketing. So if it's a realtor, it probably has realtor copy. For sure. So they also have some like, that's why they probably asked you all those questions up front. Like who, what is this for? What are you using it for? How can I we, like that a lot. Yeah. How can um, we personally how can we personalize the whole experience? Yeah. Does Asana do that? I don't I don't mean to start this war on the podcast and the, I think they do. Oh uh, yeah, no, no. It's, I mean I, I all these SaaS companies are doing all this at UB testing now. I mean like at least they should, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, Asana, I mean Asana is also like massive company. Yeah. It was started by like what? I think like one of the ex Facebook founders, right? Oh really? I yeah. See. Yeah, Asana is massive, dude. They make so much money. Like, I think it's like over a hundred million dollar company. Wow. Yeah, but let's go to back. Go to go to my board. All right, go back into the. Uh, yeah, I mean, like my. I mean, like I love SaaS stuff. I mean, that's my background. So nice. All right, cool. So this is a pretty cool dashboard. I'm yeah, I think around. this is cool. You know, it sort of yeah, makes the welcome. Of course, it's like you know, it's pretty common. A lot of these softwares, <laughs> a lot of colors. I like that a lot. Yeah, it's a colorful um, platform. It is less scary to look at than I know a lot of, you know, people I've been looking, using Asana for a few years, but I remember my first time in Asana, it was very scary because I, there was like a hundred tasks and, yeah. you know, it wasn't very clear what all these little columns meant, but here it, it's like pretty, it's a very clean look, uh, like everything's, it looks yeah. more straightforward. I like the interface a lot. So nice. That's cool. Yeah, Anything, do we want to talk more about the user experience here now for a SaaS user experience or do we want to talk more I about think, I think what they did files? here was a great user experience. I think having a great onboarding is great. Mm -hmm. They Clearly, they would, they're trying to figure out who you are, what your customer is. Um, mm -hmm. I think that, uh, yeah, I mean, onboarding I thought was great. I mean, let's just sort of try to create new stuff on here and sort of see what that's like. And mm -hmm. also, um, a lot of these SaaS companies too have that little thing on the bottom now called like continue exploring. 
you see where it's like gives you like kind of what you it sort of walks you through it's interesting because like like you can see how some these companies are so complicated when i say complicated i mean there's so many things to do in this platform that they need to like give you a walkthrough yeah and that's important software just does so much now yeah i imagine that's important to do for a SaaS company as well just to show the value yep like there are not just like like if someone would be leaving thinking, oh, there's not much I can do with it or it can't help for my specific problem, it's because they haven't explored it enough. And uh, that's something that I imagine is, uh, is a very real issue. So they read a lot of education up front about it. And yeah, I think you have to, especially, especially in a tool like this where it's kind of like, oh, it's going to be confusing. Oh, it's like all this stuff. It's like you have all these objections like, oh, I got to learn this all over again. I got to learn their way of doing it. I got to learn what are their tasks. Mm-hmm. Right. Even when we switched from, even when we got to Asana, it was a learning curve. And just because I was just like, Oh my God, like I, what does this all mean? You know, mm-hmm. how do you, what's projects? How do you comment people? You know, all these notifications you're going to get. Right. Mm-hmm. All this stuff. Yeah. It's really cool. Nice. You want to look more about their ads? A little yeah. Let's more go look or? at their ads again. Yeah. Maybe, maybe try a different funnel or something or Maybe try the student funnel. See how yeah, that differs. Maybe have. the language would be much different. I like this emergency county responding to COVID. It's like a, maybe a PR or something. Or yeah. emergency management. That's interesting. Interesting. Okay. Nice. Well, they have a lot of stuff they can do. I mean, there's so many use cases, right? This is why project management is just such a huge business. Yeah. And, and everybody's you know what? managing projects. Absolutely. And, and let's say you're a SaaS company you have to think there's so many different personas that you can appeal to, especially like something like this. There's so Mm -hmm. many personas you can appeal to. So personas in marketing are extremely important. And we see this with e-commerce. You got a few personas you want to try, but in this case, a SaaS company or or even any product that's that there's a lot of, you think it's a universal, you think it's for everyone. You can think of so many different use cases and have completely different funnels for them with different language, addressing different pain points. That's something extremely important that uh, a lot of brands, uh, it, it helps them grow a lot, especially when in the paid advertising. Because we're thinking about marketing angles. Marketing angles are just reasons why people buy. And if you can yeah. address reasons why people are buying and have addressed more different reasons why people are buying, you're widening the number of people you can appeal to. So it's being specific and I guess broad at the same time. I'm not sure how to explain that, but it's definitely, uh, you'd have to think about these personas and angles when you're marketing. Yeah, no, it, it, it really affects everything you're doing it when you're marketing from the copy to the language to however you're sending things. Kind of, mm-hmm. kind of like the email that you just got from Monday where it's like it's related to marketing. Yeah. Oh, it looks like they're doing international ads. Yep. Oh, for sure. We can do all. I'm, I'm sure they're doing a ton of different countries. Yeah, do all. Let's see what they're doing. Oh, well, okay. Oh, so yeah. this is the ad. Oh, great podcast content because uh, I want to show this ad. This is the ad. I, it was the, one of the, the best one ads want? I got. So, okay. How, how did you see this ad when it doesn't say United States? I don't know, man. <laughs> Where are you traveling, Eric? Are you traveling? Well, I was in China a month or two ago. So, uh, you might be on their uh, international picture. Yeah, I was in Hong Kong too. You're definitely on their international picture. Yeah, I don't know. And I think it's a retargeting one. I don't know if it's retargeting or not, but. But this is definitely you, like oh yeah, with your your third cats. <laughs> okay, yeah, well sure. I jumped on yeah, this. Yeah, your one, cats yeah. like on your I back. Think I and we're saved doing... it with um, because look, if you right click this, you can just save the video as. Yeah, uh, that's yeah, another so trick that's too huge. for people. I'm not sure. Like I think it's just Chrome, but you can always save these ads. Yeah, um, yeah. If you look at ads library again, um, that's one of the my favorite parts about looking at ads library. You just you right click and you save the video. Now you have the video. Um, yeah, it's on your computer. You can organize your files that way. You can share it internally. Yeah, we usually, we, we, what we usually do is like, we'll save the video and we'll talk to our designer and be like, hey, we really like this ad. Like, mm-hmm, absolutely. Let's, yeah. It's the easiest yeah, or, way to do it. Or how we can apply this to other industries or just like, it, that's such a cool thing to do. And I mentioned that because if you're looking on your own feed, how to save ads and videos, it's a lot harder. There's, you got to get some Chrome extensions. Yeah. If you see it on Instagram, you got to record your screen or something. I, but yeah, the ads library, yeah, you can find it. You can save it real fast. Uh, even if you get an ad on Instagram, go ahead and quickly look them up. Maybe save the post or something or send it to someone or for safekeeping. And then next time you're on your desktop, look at their ads library, look for it. Go ahead, do that right click. It's uh, so easy. Yeah, ads. I love sharing ads this way. 
Yep. Nice. Okay, cool. Thank Let's you. see what else we can learn from their ads. Again, I think some things we can learn is they use a lot of copy on top of their tech on their ads. Absolutely. It's, 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 it's something that we keep seeing over and over again. Remember Noom or Noom last week? Noom, yeah. They kept using text on top of their ads. I think like the best DTC, like not DTC, but performance uh, sort of brands are doing stuff on Facebook like this. They're using text on top because the video, you can really say your messaging. You can really say, okay, what's your hook? What's your, what's your problem? How are you solving it? Here's a solution. Um, Especially a nice and simple sentence that they don't even have to read to, per se, but like a phrase that they'll just subconsciously see. Yeah. Like they see work remotely team. And I click this. Oh, they got audio too. Yeah. The, like I keep saying over again, over again, some people just want videos that just don't show any text or copy. You need to show something on top of that. Yeah, it's a nice way to visualize it. Um, some people don't have sound on. In this case, they, they, what I like is they do audio overlays if you do have sound on. But yeah, once again, I also love the color in this ad. I, I saw this ad a few different variations of this as well on my own feeds and noted it. But so much color. Really cool animations. I like this a lot. Yeah. And you see how here too, if this is a Snapchat ad or it's not Snapchat. Wow. Uh, Instagram story ad. With the oh yeah, this up. is a story one. Can you save these too, the story ones, with the right click? I'm pretty sure you can, yeah. yeah nice, yeah. Yeah, you that, can see the story ones. The story well. ones are the hardest to save. Like uh, on, yeah. Yeah, uh, on Instagram, yeah. yeah Go ahead, look so at the hard. ad library. and It has a swipe up. It has a start yeah. the free trial. Um, you can tell they made this like just for Instagram just for. stories. It's really yep. nice. It came, up, came out really nice. Oh, this is, the, this is actually the first one I saw with the, anyway. The dog um, one? The yeah. story, but yeah, well. Did you swipe up? Color. It reminds me a lot of Magic Spoon in their color, which is really cool. <clears throat> yep. It's, a, it's, like, that's, it, it's, it's probably that purple. Basically, to summarize this, if you want to see how a SaaS company is doing a really good job in a performance marketing, Monday.com is a really good example. They have a lot of different uh, angles and different funnels for each of their different personas. They're using a lot of different personas because it's very versatile software. Uh, even if you're not a SaaS company, you're just an apparel brand or some household product or something that there's so many different use cases and target customers, maybe um, moms, maybe kids, maybe something else. They have different funnels for each one and you can see it so clearly in their ads and even their landing pages and everything. So that's really cool. They're definitely doing a good job. The ads themselves look great. Um, you know, they're trying a lot of different things. So if you're looking at just ways to even just broaden the personas in your own advertising, regardless of your industry, or just do see how a SaaS company is growing well, specifically Facebook ads, yeah, this is a great thing to look at. All right, perfect. All right, thanks, Eric. I think we good overview. Uh, but yeah, cool. Thanks, guys. Any other questions or comments? You know, feel free to email us or comment us where we post post this, and uh, we'll see you next week. This week's episode of Digital Marketing Fastlane was brought to you by the performance marketing experts at Voy Media. Join us again next time as we'll be bringing you more tips, techniques, and know-how to make your online business the very best that it can be. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, we'd love to hear them on Twitter at Voy Media. Thank you.